So now let's set up a resume template. So up here at the top, under Info Center area, let's go to Employees. And then we're going to go through the same exact process of adding a template that we already have. So again, to do that, you go to this Add drop-down box, Import Adobe InDesign Template, Name Your Template, Browse, Find It, and Upload It. Once uploaded, you'll find it over here on the left-hand side, and you will go and you will hit Update. And that will, again, open it up in InDesign. Okay, so here we are in InDesign. We have our basic resume template that we use, and we're just going to go through this, and we're going to update it. So again, let's, you're going to use, anytime you use a photo, you pretty much always use proposal graphic, or um, that, that's going to be the, the call for that one. So you can just click on this, take out the photo. Again, use your text frame, picture frame. Hit the T button or click text over here on the left-hand side. So again, when you opened up this in Vision, it opened up this merge code box. So over here, uh, yours will say employees. I already had this open. Yours will say employees on the table. So let's go and let's do the proposal graphic. And again, you want to use one higher up on the page to lower the number. So insert that there. Let's change out the name. That's going to be employee first name, I believe. Insert, and we can just, okay, just we can do a manual return for now because all employees are going to have a first name and a last name. That's not really something you're, it's not something you should encounter. But if you're afraid that your employees might not have a last name in your database, you can use the succeeding text uh, there. If you have need to do a comma or anything with information, again, that's how the succeeding preceding text work. If you're going to use anything that you're not sure if it's going to show in your database, use it there. But we know that we have employees' last names, so insert. And then we do not know if they have a suffix, so succeeding text, we're going to do a comma and a space, and we're just going to go to suffix, insert it. Okay, the formatting looks off, but it should export out fine. And just for a quick mention on how formatting works, so all your styles, your character styles, your paragraph styles, everything you apply here should work on the export out. Sometimes things might get a little funky, like if you have a lot of information, it will actually take your text size and it will reduce it to fit everything into one box. We'll go into that in greater detail later, but know why you're setting up these templates. You want to apply all the styles, text styles, character styles, paragraph styles, anything that you have set up and that you use consistently. Go ahead and just apply that to your template so that it's on everything you export out. Okay, so we want to go ahead and use a bio here. This is where it shows all the projects that this employee has worked on. So let's use the proposal resume. Okay, um, education. So this right here, this is where things get a tad bit different. This is where you would use a begin and end code. So click in there. Let's see. And for some reason it's grayed out. I'm not sure why. Oh, because I'm not. So once you click off of that main employees drop down, you're going into subtables and uh, different charts. You'll you'll have to use a beginning end code on anything that is not on the main primary drop down. So go ahead and insert that code and then click between it. And so we want to list off the degrees that this person has. So we pull down the degrees table and we're going to list. Let's see. Let's go ahead with the degree. And then we want, after all of them, a comma. And then let's do the institution. And then again, comma and a space. And let's do the date, the year earned. And there's your formatting. So that's why we like it. All right, so now we're going to come over to the expertise. And let's update this person's primary skill. And 
And that's going to be under the skills drop down. Yep. Uh, let's go with skills. Insert. So we insert our begin end code. Oh, that just threw our formatting off for some reason. So yeah, if you're getting that problem where you're inserting code and it just disappears off and you're not sure what's happening, just make sure you have this hyphenate button checked and you'll be okay. So back down to experience, that was under employees, years with FSP, that should be years with firm, years with firm, okay. All right, now let's just list out the licenses, all the different licenses and the states that they're held in. That should be under licenses drop down, I believe. Yep, licenses. So there's a, you have the option of license, license date, uh, license state. So we're going to do license and state. So let's go ahead and insert our begin and end code because this is a different table. Click on the middle of this begin and end code. Make sure you have license selected as the field, insert, and then we're going to do succeeding text. You should have this in, you should know what state all of your licenses are registered to, but you might not have the information. So come down to license, state, province name, insert. Okay. Now we have fully set up the resume page. So we are good to go on here. So you are going to click, well, just make sure you have all your formatting applied. This right here seems to be off. So we're going to left justify. Make sure everything's left justified. Apply any styles that you want to have. Go ahead now. Now's the time to apply them. You can apply them once you export them out to InDesign, but eventually they're just going to get sick of always updating the same thing. So it's best just to go ahead and apply them now. Bring up the merge code box. Hit save and close. And that is going to bring you back to vision. 